Cats are naturally independent animals. They enter the world almost immediately, learning to fend for themselves. Once their mama leaves, it can become a survival of the fittest, unless they are born into a loving home. A cat born on the streets or in the woods will naturally seek self-defense and self-preservation above all. Welcome to the world and the topic of feline dominance. What's it really all about and how do cats flex those dominant muscles against their peers? In this video, we'll break it all down in short order. We hope this content leaves you informed. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to join us. We appreciate your time and value your support. Now, let's get started. Every cat is different, at least to some degree. Some cats come out swinging, dang near literally in some cases. We've all come across these cats. Heck, they even make TV shows about cats from hell. Cats with this nature do not take kindly to being around other cats. Aggression and intimidation is the name of the game. And watch yourself. Cats that fit into this category will scratch and bite you while never giving it a second thought. Or even a first thought, for that matter. The ultimate alpha, a friend to no one, the definition of dominance. While cats like this are the ultimate end of the dominant spectrum, other cats are happy to be submissive, cute and sweet. They can coexist with other cats and even other animals entirely. This has a lot to do with how much time they spent with their mothers, what they were taught and what they witnessed, and how well and how quickly they were taken in by a loving family. If the mom was already a part of a loving family, then they were likely born into love. This can go a long way when it comes to the likely development of a sweet cat compared to a cat from hell. Cats from this cloth are a bit less likely to develop a need for ultimate self-defense and self-preservation as they were immediately taken in and groomed from a behavioral standpoint to learn important lessons of obedience. It's all about trust. That's probably the best way to sum it up. A feral cat, essentially any cat that's born and lives off the land without a home, lacks trust. That's the foundation for dominant behavior, self-defense, posturing, and self-preservation. Cats that develop trust at a very early age have no reason to feel threatened by their environment. Therefore, they are less aggressive and tend to be a bit more submissive. While this is certainly not to say that dominance and aggressive cats can't come from a loving home environment, feral and stray cats tend to be more inclined to drift into this extreme spectrum of dominance as their very life, in many cases, will depend on it. Generally speaking, males that are unfixed tend to be more dominant, driven by testosterone, Sexually active males are often more aggressive, as fighting is often used to weed out the herd. A dominant male will have his pick of mating partners if other cats have been neutralized by the ultimate alpha. Dominance is not a one-size-fits-all showcase, but rather a series of behaviors that can become quite obvious over time. And if you've ever seen a dominant cat at work, or have owned one in the past, or currently own one, you know all the signs of dominance all too well. Scent marking. This involves staking claim, staking out territory. The hoarding of objects. If a dominant cat is living amongst its peers, it would likely hoard and steal toys from the other cats. Food aggression. This is similar to hoarding in many ways. All the food is my food. And if that means I have to bop you upside the head, then so be it. Dominant alpha cats often strike other cats as a means to take over a mealtime session. Blocking. While a certain stage has to be set for this to arise, blocking is what you think. This is where a dominant alpha will literally block the path of a submissive cat. If for no other reason than to flex some muscle, show authority, and just to be downright mean. Schoolyard bully tactics. Next is grooming. This one is rather interesting. The dominant cat will lick the head and face of the submissive cat. While this is certainly not a form of aggression, it is still a form of intimidation and power. While well, this type of grooming can be done as an apology by the dominant cat to the submissive cat for previous behaviors, this is very rare. Grooming of this nature is usually an under-my-thumb tactic. You're below me, and I'm grooming you because I run the show. Next is staring. Not much to be said here. I think we've all seen this before. Two cats having a staring contest. This typically involves a dominant cat eyeballing a submissive cat, leaving the submissive cat a bit fearful and frozen in place. This is not too much unlike the blocking tactic. This can eventually result in a physical altercation. The next sign of dominance and intimidation involves body language. If you're the alpha, you've got to have a posture, right? Head held high, back straight, ears pointed, tail upward, and slightly arched at the base. When you combine this posture with an intense stare, the dominant alpha will get the attention of the submissive females. If looks aren't 
Intimidating enough, the alpha will resort to growls and hisses aimed at the submissive cat. The culmination of this could involve yet another physical altercation. The next sign that we'll cover is unprovoked aggression. If an alpha cat is attempting to make sure everyone around still knows who's boss, the dominant cat will lash out. Over time, aggression of this nature can break a submissive cat down and leave it constantly worried about a future attack. This obviously leads to a situation where the naturally submissive cat isn't so submissive anymore. A physical showdown for superiority could be on the horizon if the unprovoked aggression continues. While not all feline aggression is directly tied to dominance, quite obviously, but if the alpha has a history of flecting some muscle, acts of aggression like this are likely more than reminders as to who is, here again, running the show. The final issue or sign that we'll briefly discuss involves play fighting styles. This is related to aggression. As an owner, it's important to be able to tell the difference between a real fight and play fighting. A fight related to dominance versus two cats that are simply blowing off some friendly steam. Here are a few differences in what will transpire. Gentle play fighting is mostly silent, while a serious throwdown involves some hissing and some growling. Cats rarely show their claws during a play fight, but you can bet your last dollar that all the claws are out during a serious fight. Play fight, ears pointed forward. The real deal, ears pinned back. Play typically involves gentle biting, the quick nub-nub style. Real fighting, you can expect to witness dedicated biting that is designed to break the skin. A playful roll around involves both cats willing to engage. One cat is rarely in protest against what is taking place. In a real fight, one cat, the non-dominant, is in a battle, trying to escape the fray while either being literally drugged back into the mix or running for safety with the dominant feline in chase. And finally, in a play fight, both cats have a relaxed body language. They're willing participants, and they're just having some fun. In a real fight, both cats are on edge. It's a serious showdown. If the submissive cat is willing to duke it out in an effort to gain supremacy, things can be taken to some rather alarming levels. What you must never forget as an owner is that cats are indeed animals. While this can be easy to overlook because you fall in love with your furry friends and you treat them like family, they're not us. When two cats go at it for domination, it can end up in a battle for life itself, a battle to the death in some rare cases. It's the animal kingdom at work, survival of the fittest. And on that note, that will conclude things for the video portion of this material, but we're certainly not finished. While we've covered a lot here today, there's still more to be uncovered. If you'd like to know more about this interesting topic, please head on over to SeniorCatWellness.com. There you will find an in-depth article with your name on it. If you're currently watching us off-site, please click the initial link in the description box below. Said link will take you to the goods. We hope you find the article helpful, especially if you're the current owner of a dominant alpha. Not all dominance is displayed with aggression, as we've noted, but picking up on the smallest of signs can help you identify the alpha and teach the feline some positive lessons of engagement and how to get along with your other cats. And that's a wrap. Until our paths cross again, and I certainly hope they do, we'd like to thank you once again for joining us today. Please have a wonderful day. All the best to you and yours, and we'll talk to you later.